stop focusing on price and I'd stop focusing on, on, the, on the target markets that focus on price and I would start focusing on value and I would start separating yourself so that you have no competition because you don't think that way. On a job, Chief. Job stands for just over broke. You know, how much should I put in and how much should I take profit? No, what you're trying to say is how, how much of the money that you're making should you put back into the company to grow and scale? And the answer is, welcome folks, Brad Vice back in action, the oracle is in. Advice with relationships, life, business, sales. Now is my advice always correct? No, but it's always real. And it's always the truth and I'm only doing it to try and help people. And I give you the advice basically that if I were you, go ahead, let's take the first caller. How do you get people to pay in full? You get people to pay in full by asking for it in full. Do you ask for it in full? Of course, every time. Okay, well then that's how you get them to pay you in full. Now, are you are you trying to tell me that they're not willing to pay you in full? They need to split it up into payments. Okay, that means you're targeting the wrong market and the and the people that you have are at the bottom of the of the like demographic, meaning you need to change where you're fishing because the people that you're fishing with right now, they don't have the money in full. Or you come up with a financing option to where you get your money immediately and they can make payments some other time, which by the way is called like Klarna or there's various companies that will loan the money to them because they're of their decent credit. So you get a financing option and now you get them to pay in full. The only difference is, is the finance, uh, the bank's paying you in full and then they will pay the bank, which you don't care as long as you're paid. Correct, Mike Mo? So I do have the financing option. I guess that's when I was rambling that was getting confused. So the financing, again, they're, they're not getting approved because of the credit or the right now. Okay, well, then you need more financing options. Or, bro, what you probably should do is fish in a different pond where there's not a bunch of people that can't afford your product. Targeting's right. off. You're, 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 you're fishing in a place that people can't afford to pay you in full. Well, if your service is worth it, which is obviously it must be because they're willing to make payments, which means that's a good sign. It means you got a strong product. They're willing to make payments, dude. So like at the end of the day, you got to say, okay, the thing sells. I'm just selling it to the wrong people. And then go move your targeting to find people that have more money. They'll pay in full in five seconds. What's paid in full cost? Uh, it could vary for different clients. It's paid in full could be five grand. I have clients 20 grand. But the thing is, I'm having the problems more with the people with the lower payments for like five, six, seven grand. And then, like you said, they don't have enough credit to get approved with financing. Normally, their scores are under 650 or 620, and the finance companies that I have just aren't approving it. So it's just like I'm kind of stuck with these in-house payments, and then halfway through, they stop paying. You know what I mean? So did you did you figure out any anything that you can do to change that? In my opinion, I think it's the market, but I can only blame myself. I know that I, I think you're right. Just maybe it's the marketing that's the problem. I could, but the thing is, is that if I target the, the higher end clients, um, they tend to not need the services. You're filled with problems, aren't you? The whole world's against you, brother. For every solution, no, no. you've got a problem. You got to reverse that, my man. For every problem, you got a solution. Right now, it's for every solution, you got a problem. Everything I keep telling you, there's another problem and another problem. And yeah, but, yeah, but, yeah, but. Mike, how old are you? 35. And dude, listen, what you got to do is uh, you, you got the right heart because you're seeking information. The problem is, is I don't think you're taking it. You need to do what I'm telling you to do and prove me wrong and then come back and jump on here and either thank me for the brilliant advice or ask more questions because you didn't quite understand what I said or tell me I'm wrong. And I'll bet you, you never call back and tell me you're, I'm wrong. Because you asked a very simple question, how do I get them to pay in full? The answer, and no one can dispute this, the answer is you, is you ask to be paid in full. If you don't refuse any other way to do business with you, that's the only way they can pay, which is how you get them to do it. You don't give out any other options. That is how you get them to pay them in full. But that wasn't your question, or that isn't what you really wanted to know. You really wanted to know, how do you get them to pay in full when they don't have any money? Well, dude, you, you, unless you have a magic wand, that doesn't happen. I don't know what the cost of goods sold are, but a lot of times you can take the damn financing yourself. Say, okay, start with a thousand a month, start today, and I'll and I'll let you in. Especially if you're you know proud of your product. But 
every every solution I give you, you keep saying, yeah, but that's a problem. Well, no, but this is a problem. So now I'm like to the point where like, Mike, are you the problem? Do you think you might be the problem? No, 100% no. Well, then that's, again, see, dude, you got to take responsibility. You are the problem, my friend. You're the problem, dog. You're the problem. How are we going to fix it? Hey, but Mike, you, you'll figure it out, dude. You're a smart dude, and you're going places. No matter what, you'll figure it out. Hopefully, hopefully I helped you. So my question is this. How do you choose the people that are on dropping bombs? How do I choose them? That's my question. Because you have great guests. And I love the selection. I love the versatility. But I'm curious how you choose the guest. This sounds like a freaking plant so I can say what I would say. But, Eric, I choose my guest just based on, you know, making assumptions. Does the, does the world need to hear their story? Do I want to talk to them for an hour and, and get to know them? If I do... And I think the world needs to hear their story. Well, then I invite them on. I guess that, that answers my question then. I'll let you get to the next caller. Well, hold on, Eric. Or if they're famous, you know, like if they're famous, well, I want them on just because they're famous. And then really just stories of adversity so people can learn through other people's issues, you know, stories of triumph, like any, any real business person out there that, you know, has a story. You know, like people like that. Why? Why do you ask, Eric? I think it's a great, it's a great show. And uh, it brings a lot of value to your page. And I know you don't, you know, it's not your main source of income or anything like that, but it definitely brings a following to you. And then, you know, people tap in and they need your services outside of the show. I'm sure that that gains notoriety and gives you credibility to sell them into you know, light speed. That's called a platform. Yeah, it does give me a platform so people do that. Are you are you listening to the show? I do. Dropping bombs. This show. This, you just started Brad Vice, didn't you? Yeah, no, this is Brad Vice. Yeah, this isn't dropping bombs. But do you listen to dropping bombs, the podcast? I do. I've been I've been following since um I'm gonna test you. I was following I'm gonna test Brian you. Cristiano. Okay, I'm and gonna then Brian when you did the interview with Brian Cristiano. Damn, dude. Damn. Like what are you talking about? That you that was been forever. So Eric, um what does that make you? If you listen to dropping bombs, what are you part of? I guess I'm part of your following, sir. Yeah, but what are the listeners called if you listen to it? Uh, what are the listeners called? See, you don't even know what the I listeners, don't you don't even know what the audience is called, bro ham. Like, you listen to one episode of Brian Cristiano of all episodes. Oh, one episode? No, 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 no. I've been following, I've been on Dropping Bombs. Okay, so what is, a, what is someone who listens to the podcast called? What are they part of? What's my audience called? Okay, you, you, you oh, me, dude, it's called the Bomb <laughs> Squad. It's called the Bomb Squad, son. Um, Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm a bad caller. I shouldn't, bad caller. I shouldn't call hey, it, thanks for calling, buddy. I was wondering, does it matter what you sell, or is it how good of a closer that you are? Well, again, to me, brother, if it doesn't matter what you sell, then you need to go get some ethics and integrity first if you want to be truly successful. Because only, like, unscrupulous people sell shit that they don't believe in. How you like me now? Okay. So, yeah, again, a lot of people won't agree with that. Why? Well, because, dude, listen, you can be a badass salesperson and sell anything without needing to like it. Yes, I agree. You don't need to, but you should. If you don't, if you don't have any belief in your product, it makes it much harder, and you're kind of like a scam dog now, bro. You don't even believe in the you're selling so so you're lying you're you're swindling you're taking people's money you're influencing people to buy a product you don't even believe in now again does that mean that you're a bad guy no it just means that you're probably not the best and in my opinion dude you want to buy from people that you like and that you can trust and so if someone's selling you something that they don't believe in and they don't like at all well then i wouldn't I mean, again, I don't think it's ethical and I don't think it's good. So to answer your question, yes, you theoretically can sell shit you're not into. I just don't think you should. Why? Because there's a, like, it's easier to sell the shit that you're into. Like, dude, you can get behind something and believe in something and, and allow that certainty and enthusiasm 
to, to be transferred much easier. You don't have to people. You don't have to lie. You don't have to cheat. You don't have to beg. You don't have to pressure when you're selling something you believe in. You follow me? So when you say, do you have to, or what's better? Well, it's always better to sell something you believe in. You already knew that, didn't you? Yeah. It's, it's, the problem is getting them to believe. Get who to believe? The, the people at the door, the, the homeowners. Get them to believe what? That you believe in it? That they need solar panels. Well, again, you don't try and convince them that they need solar panels, fool. That's your problem. You're trying to sell them solar panels. Nobody wants solar panels. They, they want control of their power bill. They want, to, they want to save money. They want to improve the value of their home. They want to increase the equity in their home. They want to take control back from the local giant power company that's had them over the barrel for a long time and is about to have them over the barrel even worse. Why? What do you think power is going to get more expensive or less expensive? I, I believe it's going to get more expensive, but people... Exactly. So if it's going to get more expensive, do you not want it. the controls to keep that dial down for the rest of your life? Or would you rather just keep being screwed by the major power companies? Dude, I'm not selling you solar panels. That's how you're getting what I'm selling you. What I'm selling you is what you want. You want more money in your pocket. You want more equity in your home. You want more control. You want to stop getting screwed, don't you? That's easy to sell. You're selling solar panels, bro. That's your fault. That's your problem. Now, by the way, stop by closerschool.com if you want to solve this problem. Closerschool.com. There's my little plug and commercial. Anyway, oh, hope that... No, I want to work for your, your transaction company, your, your merchant, real merchant. Well, let's go, dude. Go to realmerchantservices.com and sign up as an agent or a referral agent. We're, we're, we're growing like weeds, bro, and that is recurring revenue, and I highly recommend you do that. Go put it, go, go get started right now at realmerchantservices.com. Awesome. Thanks, Brad. Um, my question is how do you build a sales team? How you make a sales team, first of all, is you become a sales leader yourself, hopefully. This is ideal. This is the ideal way. This isn't necessarily the only way. But ideally, bro, you want to become a badass, right? Now, if you're like the, the CEO and you're not the sales guy, you need to hire a sales leader. Okay, there has to be a sales leader, some sort of freaking leader in the front that, that sees the vision, knows how to sell it, can show other people how to sell it. And if those people can follow the leader and duplicate what they do, well, then there's your sales team. The question is, is how do you keep a sales team and how do you grow a badass sales team? But all you asked is, how do you grow a sales team? Well, if you want me to finish that answer, I finished it. Be the, the, the real meat that you're looking for. You want to know how do you build a badass, kick-ass sales team, right? Exactly. Well, you. Become... I can't. I can't sell this stuff on my own. Like I, I'm too busy trying to make the business run. I can't. Exactly. So I need some badasses. Exactly. So again, I mean, now's not the time to go into it deeply because, bro, there's a lot of information that could that could change the direction and/or advice I'm giving you. But the Brad advice in this case is you build it by getting started. And I say that to, to be a little bit, you know, like short. Why? Well, because, dude, have, have you tried building one? He's got a full-time job. I have a full-time job. We're trying to start a company from the ground. I know, but, bro, can I, can I speak to you frankly? Sure. Okay. You got to find someone else who's got nothing to do but be your sales manager. Mm. Like, dude, to build a sales team, you need a big-ass sales leader. Okay, whether it's you, the entrepreneur or the owner or whoever it is, or you hire one, but you can't hire someone who has some other shit to do. Like that's not that's not hiring someone, bro. That's asking your friend to do it, and he's busy too. Like, dude, it's time to grow up, put your big boy pants on, and say, hey, right. I'm taking this shit seriously. I need to hire somebody to lead my sales team, and then you hire a sales leader, an actual leader, and it's possible to hire poorly. I'm just saying that this is how you do it because that's what you asked. And you, and you create a sales leader and then that sales leader begins kicking that ass and then setting up processes and systems in order to train and help other people be able to do the same and then your team will grow. And then how do you keep it is you create culture, a badass culture. Hope that helps you, my man. I appreciate you, Brad. Peace, bro. Ooh, it's Giselle. That's how you say my name. Hi. Giselle Glazer. 
from West Palm Beach, yeah. Florida. Now, if you're from West Palm Beach, Florida, you're either extremely wealthy or extremely broke. Which one are you? I'm in the middle. <laughs> middle class in West Palm Beach. <laughs> so I have a question. I am now in a level where I have to entertain men that I'm not, I'm not used to. Obviously, I've, I'm in the interior design industry and, I've, and I do work with men. But now I'm in a position where I have to entertain. And how, what are your biggest topics on what we should talk to from your perspective to you guys? Oh, man, this is ripe. Um, am, I, am I making sense? My question. Yeah, you're making sense, but I also have a million jokes okay. running through my head as you're as you're saying these things. Um, but your question is serious, so I'm going to try to give you a serious answer. But plainly, plainly put, ask your question. How do you guys? What should? How should I talk to you guys as we are in the business aspect? Because talking to women is totally different than it is, you know, talking to men. So. Okay, stop, I stop, to hear your stop, perspective. stop, Giselle. That I disagree with. You are trying to tell me talking to women is different than talking to men. You don't think so? Okay. 100% no. When you talk, you talk. It doesn't matter if anyone's listening. You still talk the same. You're, you're trying to say the things you say to a woman are different than the things you would say to the man. And again, I've never once... I've never once said something differently because it was a woman. Like my brain doesn't go, oh, this is a woman. I better say something different. No, no. Now, again, I've never propositioned a man and I've propositioned women. So like there are a difference between men and women, right? So don't get me wrong, yeah. but yeah. you don't talk to them any differently. Okay. Uh, oh, okay. I'm not disagreeing with you. Okay. Let me ask you this, what, what, what position are you in where you must entertain men? So I have to have private lunches, private dinners, take um, potential customers out and out doing what? a lot of developers representing two different brands. And it's, so it's developers, it's architects, it can job be is to, Hey, your job is to take them out? No, my job is to bring them in. So when I have show, when I'm at the showroom, I'm having private lunches with them or private dinners. So I'm, you know, I'm in a close, you know, proximity with them for a long period of time. It could be two hours. So them, I first of all, to... Giselle, in order to help you best, I know it'll seem like I'm interrupting, but I want you to answer me like we're in court because I want to get you an answer. Okay. So okay. how many people are there? Between, on average, three to five. Okay, so every, what is this, every day you're doing this? No, it's like a couple times a week. A couple times a week, your job is to invite three to five men. Are these successful, rich, wealthy men? Yes, or they're in a high rank in a company. Okay, so they're important men, supposedly. Correct. Okay, well... Number one, uh, I would treat them with respect, obviously, because, you know, if you're in a yes. position that you've, you know, if you're, if you're in a position where you're in that kind of a power or prestigious position, you probably, you know, earned it. It's not always the case, but, you know, I would automatically, you know, show them respect. That's what I would do. That's the, that's, but I would do that with anybody, whether they're male or female. I would show them respect if, the, if a female walked in the door. So at the end of the day, I would show them respect because you're, you're just buying them dinner and showing appreciation. So you're trying to show the appreciation. You're going to be respectful. If your job is to wink, wink, entertain them, and there's three to five of them, well, dude, are, are you supposed to be showing your, your, your boobs? Are you supposed to be getting out a little? No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Correctly. No, so, professional. Okay. I just so, wanted to hear from your perspective. Well, my perspective is, you know, I can't believe that you actually think there's a difference. And there is a difference, but I don't think you meant it that way. You th there is a difference, but I don't, I don't think men really want to talk about their kids. You know what I mean? Like, I'm trying to, true. like... True. That's not I just true. To 
Okay. That is not so true. So I can get personal. It's it's okay to get personal in that. I wanted just to hear from your perspective as a man. Um, no, the, listen. I want you to I want you to hear my my thought behind it so you understand it because it's important. So you may be right in some cases where some men they don't want to talk about their children. They'd rather talk about something else. But but those aren't the. It's not a man that that makes them do that. It's a you know it's a it's a like in other words, there's women that don't that do that too. Probably uh, more than you'd think. But to me. If they don't want to talk about their kids, well, then are they really the type of people you want to do business with anyway? Like, dude, real people, they'd love to talk about their kids. Real people, you'd be surprised. There's times where, like, you know, you say, uh, you know, oh, I love this song, and, and, it's, and it's rap music, and you're talking to someone that you assume is, you know, really faith-based, and they like the same group you do. It's like, be yourself, okay? Be respectful, be kind, be generous, and take care of them the best you can and, and, and look to help. So you got the vibration of like, like, you know, that authentic, I just want to help you vibration and you're going to be fine. You don't have to speak to them any certain way. You don't have to freaking you know, no football or baseball or golf, but you should, if you could, meaning, Hey, guys like, you know, guys like sports, you know, women like sports, you know, Guys mm -hmm. like UFC, women like UFC. There is no man only thing unless you're talking about like, you know, wink, wink, entertain them. And then, yeah, there's a difference. But in that case, it, which isn't the case, I would give you different advice. Got it. Okay. Thank you. Oh, good question, man. I love that question. I wonder, <laughs> I, wa I wonder, <laughs> I wonder, you. what do you think of that answer? I, I love your answer. I, I, it's just something that I'm, I've been put into this role. So I just wanted to, you know, hear from a man perspective and I get it. There's no, I understand there's no difference, but I think underlining there is a difference. And I do feel that men love to do business with men. So that's why I wanted to just call and see what you, what you thought. You said men love to do business with men. Listen, there are men like that, but not real men. Mm -hmm. But I deal with all aspects of them. So. <laughs> no, I know, but you, there's, there's going to be men that would prefer dealing with a dude. Why? I don't know, but they're out there. Just like there is racism in the world. Yeah. There are chauvinists in the world. If anyone doubts that there's racism and chauvinism, they're, they're, they're stupid, you know, naive. Correct. So there's men out there that would prefer, Absolutely. I don't want to talk to some broad. But, mm -hmm. but Giselle... Don't worry about those people. If they come through and you're doing what I suggested, they're going to be fine. And if they didn't want to deal with a broad, you know, they're one of those types. Well, then, then they're not, you, there's nothing I could tell you that would make them happy because those people, they don't want to deal with you too late, too bad. So Got guess, it. so guess what you can do? Don't let it bother you. That's the key. Like freaking let, let, let it chew them up that freaking you were still just as sweet, just as nice, and just as kind. Thank you. Thank always you so smile, much. And always smile. <laughs> well hey, and, and by the way, just Thank for the record, you. showing tits does help. No, I'm just joking. <laughs> <laughs> this is Manny speaking, Brad. How Are you, you do they call you Manny from Manitoba? No, no, I'm from BC. I was sort of born and raised. Ah. Well, what's your question, you brother? Vancouver? I've been up there. I don't get up well, there much. What's your question? My question is this, Brad. How can I get a larger market share in my industry if my competition is charging a much lower price than me because they've been in business for more years than I have? How do I get a bigger market share when my customers charge less than me and they've been in business longer than me? My competitors are not customers. Well, again, doesn't sound like you're a competitor if they're cheaper than you, okay? And if you're going to be in a race to the bottom, I might consider doing some other business. Why? I don't like businesses where you race to the bottom and everybody cuts their pricing and undercuts their pricing. So I would stop focusing on price and I'd stop focusing on, on, the, on the target markets that focus on price. And I would start focusing on value and I would start separating yourself so that you have no competition because you don't think that way, you know, you want to go, you mm. want to buy it cheaper. I'm not your, I'm not your, your guy. 
You know, we don't do it because it's the cheapest. We do it because we're the best, and we know that deep down, at the end of the day, you're going to spend more money buying the cheapest one than you will by buying the best one. And that's us. And if you want to do business with us, well, then I suggest that you listen up because do I got a hell of a promotion happening this weekend? You know, that type of thing. Well, that's nice. Yeah, but at the other, okay. but, but, but in the essence of, of what I just said is, dude, don't focus on price. Let let those guys drop their pants and make no money. Okay. And by the way, if mm. the mar- if the market blows them up, meaning listen to the market. If they don't want your quality, okay, you got quality and you don't want and you know they're not they don't they're not listening. Why? Because your your competition's blowing them up and he's making a penny on a million people a day and you ain't making no money charging retail and now you're screwed and you can't build value in yourself and your processes and your customer care which is the differentiator, right? The both products are, I assume, the same. So then the only thing you can do is sell something they don't have, which is you. But I bet you you're not selling you, you're not selling the experience, and you're not taking care of them like you should. You're worried about just, hey, they're going to take all my customers because the price is lower. Well, then go build your value higher. Does, do I make sense? That doesn't make sense, yeah. Okay, so, so if you can't do that, you know, there's also a combination. Okay, you can lower your prices a little bit and invent other products and services to make your actual product that they want to race to the bottom on just a loss leader. So go ahead, make it a penny. I'll make mine zero and I'll give it away. Why? Because when that customer comes in the door, I'm going to upsell them this, 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 and I'm going to turn them into a lifelong customer. So again, one could be a marketing move, one could be a sales move. But dude, I hope that helps. How can I gain authority in my marketplace? How do you get authority in your marketplace? gain authority. I have a, I have a little bit, but I would like to get more, you know, start. Hey, hey, hey. Yeah, that's a great question. You know how you, 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 you said, I got a little, I got a little bit. I'd like to get more, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. And how do you get basically, you know, a little bit more credibility in your marketplace? Correct. Correct. You got it. Dude, you already know the answer. Don't even, don't even waste your, don't even waste your question. You already know the answer. I'll bet you a million dollars. You already know the answer. What do you think the answer is? Yeah, getting up, like getting on more stages, but also like posting more on social media. Those are the first two things. Okay, see what I'm talking about, dude? You're literally saying the shit and do more. Folks, if you want more, you have to do more. If you're already finding a little bit of success and you're gaining a little credibility and you're like, how do I gain more market share? How do I gain more credibility? How do I gain more recognition? You do more of the shit that do what you already tasted. And then you start setting up systems and processes to duplicate yourself because you don't want to remain doing it yourself, hopefully. And then next thing you know, you got what you call a business. And the business is is paying you money and and someone else is doing most of the work. And now you're 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 like in a beautiful situation. But that's how you do it, dude. You want to gain more. Now, what I think you wanted was a few ideas, a few clever ideas of things you could do. You know, what business are you in? Yeah, how did you Hey, How did you get I, more I How asked you, the questions, you know. young man. I asked the questions. Oh, my bad. Hey. What I'm business are you in? Trying to learn from the goat right here. I what, got you. What, what, what business are you in? I own a digital marketing agency. Okay. How, what's your biggest client's ad spend per month? $7,000 a month right now. Okay. You, you need bigger clients. I can tell you right now. I agree. I agree. 100%. Oh, okay. How good are you? We're really good. Who's we? You We're got a really turd in your good. pocket or you got a big team? My business partner and I. Okay, so it's your business partner it's and the, you. It's my business partner and I and a VA. And a VA. You working out of your house? We used to have an office, but there's too much overhead. So, yeah, we work out of our house now. See, again, you, you see how people do stories? I say you working out of your house instead of just, yeah, cutting, cutting time. My bad, bro. Yes, yeah. yeah. I know, but yeah, you know why you, you know why you do that, bro? Because deep down, you know, you know that that you know you're making an excuse for it instead of owning the shit. You work out of your house, fuck yeah, I work out of my house, okay? Like, like, dude, start being excited, and you'll start attracting bigger clients. Start being, you know, a little bit more uh, prolific, which means you know your mm, your output okay. is higher. And, and dude, ask for referrals from everybody. You know, if you've helped somebody spend seven grand a month, you need bigger clients, number one. But number two, 
get them to give you a testimonial. Where's their testimonial? Did it go viral? Have you used it in an ad? Are you doing paid ads? Like, dude, blow this shit up. You're bigger than this. You know you can do better than this. And by the way, dude, I always need people and people that I know always need people. So email me some 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 samples of your shit and maybe I'll get you guys some, I can do that. What's your I'll email? get you guys some auditions. Again, I don't know if you're any good, but guess what? I'm not from Missouri, but I do like you to show me. Like, I don't listen to how Brad, good I'll you are. I'll show you everything. What's your email? Hey, I don't listen to how good you are. Okay? I, 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 I'll I, show you. I, right. I watch and I see how good you are. And that's the best way to gain that notoriety you're looking for and then gain that credibility and then gain that attention. You can also get on people's podcasts. Like, if I got you on my podcast, dude, you'd get a lot of attention overnight. The question is, is are you ready for it? That's the question. Okay, you get on my podcast, by the way, simply by putting in an application. Have you applied to be on Dropping Bombs? What is the best part-time sales position I can work at to earn a supplemental income to turn it into a pool? Gotcha. The philosophical answer is going to be part-time position selling yourself on working full-time. Okay, why would you be looking for a part-time position to sell something? Well, because you find value in doing other things more important. Otherwise, you'd want a full-time job. So use the part-time sales position to sell yourself on making it full-time. Can you feel what I'm stepping in? My man, you're absolutely right. I appreciate it, Brad. That's just the philosophical. That's just the, that's just the bottom line philosophical answer. You should be selling yourself part-time. That's the highest paying ROI is to sell yourself to go full-time, brother. But once you're full-time and you understand what I'm talking about, well, that's the philosophical. The actual answer is, and this is also a legitimate answer, because sometimes you know people are busy, they've got other things, and they're not willing to give them up, but they, do, they are smart enough to get into sales part-time. So if you want to get into sales part-time to, to, to basically get out of whatever else is so damn important, which is a wise way to do it, part-time sales. You want to do something that's recurring revenue, okay? That's why I started my real financial, okay? And again, I mean, I'm even paying people's licensing to, to get them started. So real financial is like life insurance, health insurance, annuities, 401ks, um, you know, infinite banking, all kinds of stuff like that. Because everybody needs it and everybody wants it, and you can do that part-time, work for yourself. There's also merchant processing. All these businesses in the world, there's 29 million just here in the United States that literally overpay on their processing fees, and none of them realize it. So you can literally uh, go out part-time and sell people on just using your processing, which will be, you know, or using mine, which is why I started that. But at the end of the day, dude, processing. You know, part-time, you can sell um, advertising. You want something to where even part-time, you're getting enough opportunity to get hit in the face and get better and get more experienced so you can eventually go full-time. You know what I'm talking about? I love it. The more hands you shake, the more money you make, right? You already know that, dude. What are you doing other than part-time sales positions? Uh, forklift mechanic at the moment, my friend. So, um... Uh, forklift. So I, I, oh, okay. I Listen, what do you make? Lift. Yeah, what? Well, yeah, a mechanic. You fix forklifts. And again, that's awesome, dude. That you're. I want to sell them. Listen, though, you want to sell them exactly. So at the end of the day, dude, yep. fixing them is great, and knowing how to fix them means you're always going to be employed. You hear what I, I said? Want more, though. You hear I'm what not, I said? I do. Pay attention, do. everybody. Pay I attention do. to what I just said. Knowing how to fix them means that you'll, you'll always, always have a job. I want more than a job. I want a job, Chief. Job stands for just over broke. Okay. Exactly. You wanna, you wanna, you wanna freaking do exactly what you're doing, and it's, and again, if you ain't got the nerve to jump full full time, then you then you go part time. But but the, I like my original answer best now because, what's the best part time sales position to earn income? Sell it yourself on going full time. Mm -hmm. Can I get a come on? Folks, I don't Drop know if you guys mile. like Brad I, Vice, dislike Brad Vice. I hope people in the comments, you guys share these little clips that we're sharing because we want more live callers. Jason, you demand. Appreciate you calling. You want some straight up advice? Brad Vice is the only place to get it, okay? Without wasting time and telling stories and, you know, hypothetically and being politically correct. Yak, 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 yak. I'm going to give you the truth. Don't like it, don't tune in.
What's the best way to scale, he says. Now, this is a good question. Or, this is a good question, and, and, and I'm going to give you some good advice. Okay, and it and it's, applies to anybody with the same question. You grow and scale a company by very simply leveraging people or technology, or both, obviously. So whatever you're doing now to create money, right, the systems, the processes, yes, the, 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 the consistent things that you're doing, the predictable things that you're doing to generate the predictable results you're getting, right? You want to grow and scale that, correct? So you're going to need either yes, people sir. or technology. So, so what you do, right. knowing that you're going to need people, is you document each and every role that's necessary and determine exactly what you expect and how to do it. So when you hire somebody, you've got a documented systems and processes in place, and plus you know exactly how to train them. If you know, you're probably going to need a training system. Wink, wink. Which we can get you. But point being is you document the systems and processes, and then you hire the people. Then you do what's called a, a, a tech audit. You go and look uh, at all the technology that's out in the world, whether it's AI or a CRM or a freaking you know, program of some kind, and you figure out how do I leverage technology to do what these things are doing, these systems and processes, faster, better, stronger. Because I, right. I need to grow okay. and scale my business. So I need to do it faster. I need to do it stronger. I need to do it cheaper. I need to do it better. Any technology going to help me do that? And you spend your day looking for technology that will help you do that. And by the way, this isn't something that you do and then, and then that's all you have to do. This is something that you do repeatedly. You're constantly doing this because you're working on the business and not in the business. Does that make sense? Too many business owners are working in their business and all, and all they're building is a cage that traps them because now they have to be in their business or it doesn't run right and it doesn't make money. Well, dude, that's not a business. That's called, that's called a, a job. You built yourself a job. Right. You, you own a job. So if you want to grow and scale your company, which everybody does, okay, you're going to need to understand that's people and technology. So let me get prepared to bring on people and educate them and train them and, and, and lead them. And then let me see how, what okay. leverage I can, uh, what technology I can leverage to help me make, help me do that better, faster, stronger, cheaper, quicker, more enjoyably, et cetera. Make sense? Yes, sir. Uh huh. That's right. What kind of business? Um, what trying to business? A cleaning company? Yes, sir. So we started. We started last September. We uh, commercial residential construction cleanup. We've got. Uh, we started September first of last year. We're running 10 cleaning crews throughout South Texas right now. Yes, sir. How come you aren't doing hazardous and um, like emergency? Like how come you aren't willing to do um, hazardous cleanup? Oh, we're looking, we're actually looking into that and getting the certifications for that and bringing on a team to do that for us. Okay, that's called scaling, isn't it? Yes, sir. Uh, you, you mentioned something about, so, Hey, by the way, we, here's we here's the real up. here's the real motivation behind Baron. Baron, you said that you that you own a cleaning company and you're looking for resources, networks, and connections to help you scale. So you this is yes, kind of like getting on Shark Tank where the whole world sees your product or service. You you just wanted on to get a little action, didn't you? Well, I've been following you, Wes, Ed Milet, and uh, Andy Frisella for a few years now, and I got to tell you, you guys are actually my mentors, and I've been just doing what you guys say now you're talking beeswax well let me ask you between all those guys you mentioned wes watson ed mylett brad lee andy frisella all them how many of them are taking your call (laughs) you know what you know the answer that well i think wes many of them are taking your call sir that's the only (laughs) question yeah that's true you brad you brad and i appreciate many was the question just one. Yee dog. E pluribus hey, unum, quick, baby. Out of many, you said that one. That's why you, you get that you the had, Brad vice. And by the way, do you? Do you uh, thank you for calling in. I wanted to ask you real quick. You said you had a, a, a resource for training people. Oh, absolutely, dude. We, that's how I got rich. Is, is that is light, where do I go light to speed, I I light it, speed VT, dude, lightspeedvt.com. You know, it's a, it's a multi-million okay. dollar interactive platform that we basically design a white label for you to drop in, you know, your training and either sell to people or use to blow up your company. 
Either way, we've got multiple plans, and that's what like Grant Cardone uses, Tony Robbins, Zig Ziglar, John Maxwell, Tom Hopkins, General Motors, like all these various people use that technology to train people. So again, if anybody's interested in training people internally or selling your expertise to other people, especially businesses, go to lightspeedvt.com and I I guarantee you, dude, people, oh, well, we use Kajabi. Listen, unless you want a hand Kajabi or a blow Kajabi, that's not a training system. That's a hosting solution, okay? People say, well, we use Teachable. Okay, dude, listen, Teachable is a hosting solution. It allows you to put up a library of videos. That's not a system. Guys, a training system includes other elements, repetition, practice, accountability, tracking, notifications, alerts, interactivity, community, uh, discussion tabs, um, leaderboards, badges, certifications, you know, live calls, you know, archives, resources, templates, all this. So if you want a world-class training system, bro, you go to lightspeedvt.com. If you want some place to stick your videos, well, you can stick them up your sphincter pipe and it'd be just as good as the rest of them. You know what I'm talking about? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Well, I appreciate you taking my call, Brad. I'll be on your show in 24 to 36 months after I apply. Go apply. I can't wait to have you, big dog. Indeed. Hey, these sound almost like pre-planned and like I'm paying people to say this and do this. Guys, these are 100% random callers. In fact, well, you already picked Aaron, but next one, I want you to scroll, don't even pick, and, I'm, and then just pick one out of the big old list that's sitting there. Waiting. What's your limit for leverage? Define how you're using leverage. In what context? Yeah, I, I didn't want to give you too much of a story, so I just want Good. to keep it straight. But, you know the rules. I love it. Um, like, like how much should you like keep spending to grow the business when you're making money, and how much should you like, try and take profit? Well, dude, and, I mean, like, keep leveraging. Yeah. Hey, listen, the bottom line is, is you want to try to make as much profit as you can. That, that has nothing to do with it. You know, profit you can put back in your business. Don't get too, the two confused. You know, you know what I mean? Yeah. So you yeah, don't, it makes you, sense. Yeah, because again, I mean, like, you know, how much should I put in and how much should I take profit? No, what you're trying to say is how, how much of the money that you're making should you put back into the company to grow and scale? And the answer is as much as you want to grow and scale, meaning money is simply a tool. Okay, pay attention. Money is a tool. If you don't use the money, guess what it's, it's worth? Nothing. If I put money in your pocket, like I put a million dollars in your pocket tomorrow, if I sent one of my millions to you tomorrow, it's worthless if you can't spend it, if you can't use it, if you can't trade it, if you can't exchange it for things and resources that you need to, to, to grow, scale, win, make more, whatever. So money is literally useless if you don't use it. Make sense? Absolutely. Okay, so dude, just think about that every time you ask yourself, should I be spending money on my company? Well, I don't know. Uh, are you? What are you going to do with it otherwise? And well, I'm going to save it. Well, then that's not a very good thing to do. Now, if you're saving for something, like I'm saving for a house or I'm saving for to invest in this other business, you know, you can you can collect money and, and grow reserves, but you don't not use money. If you don't use money, it depreciates. It literally gets l less valuable. So you have to use it, which is why it's called currency. You have to keep it moving. Does that make sense? Absolutely. All right. Do I need an investor to uh, scale my business or just do it myself and uh, it takes longer time? Well, you just answered your own question. Do you need an investor to scale your business or do I just do it myself? Well, you just do it yourself. Why would you wait for an investor? However, a lot of people can't scale their business without an investor. So, so that's not really an option. They just think it is. Because again, if I slowly scale my business over 10 years, and finally after 10 years, I have a big business, and it took me 10 years to grow it and scale it on my own. Where if I took on an investor, let's say for half, just as, a, as the example, and I, and I went to $100 million with an investor, well, my half's now worth more than it would have been had I scaled it myself. So in order to answer that question, you, have, you always have to have all the details. And, but, but the formula that you want to use is what's it going to cost you to do it yourself versus getting someone else to, to, to give you the money in advance, the investor. Also, what is the investor bringing you? You understand? Like, is it just money or is it, yeah. or is it uh, other resources like connections and deals and yeah. assets and, 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 and accounting uh, uh, facilities and tax advantages, et cetera? So you got to do the math, brother, and then you'll know your answer. Your okay. answer should be, 
your answer should be whichever one is the smartest and best way. And until you give me those details, I can't tell you. But generally speaking, brother, I wouldn't yeah. want to sell equity. And when you get an investment, you got to give away equity. Mm -hmm. The only way I want to give away my equity is if I don't value it. So I want to value my equity so much that I don't want to get rid of it. So you better be giving me a lot of money in order for me to part with it because I value it. Make sense? And as long as you yes, value sir. it correctly, bro, you know, selling it that, right. that, yes. that literally creates your remaining piece to be three times bigger than it would have been by yourself, what's smarter, owning half of a billion or all of a million? Have a then go get an investor, big dog. And besides that, you speak Arabic, dude. You can go over to those freaking Saudi families that got like money dripping out their yin yang. You, you can go. You can go to Dubai and get some sheik to drop a billion on your ass without even blinking. Yes, sir. Alhamdulillah. Let's go. My question is: How do I get people that sell credit for a zero dollar down? The to sales, hold on, you, how do you get people that sales credit? Well, people that I have sell credit for sales a zero credit? dollar down for a $20,000 sale. So I need them to be okay with putting down three to $4,000. So I, I don't know how I can do that. Well, again, the next rule I should be implementing is make sure your question makes sense. I, listen, okay. I, I want to I want to try and decipher what it is you're saying. You, you, how do you get people to put money down on a no money down offer? Yes, because if they have a credit score of over six fifty, they, they can, can, get can get my, my deal, deal for zero dollars down. But if they don't, they have to put down four thousand dollars, and that's when they say, "No, I don't want to do anything." Oh, that makes sense. Now it makes sense. Okay, so what you're saying is, you know, there's a disclaimer. Okay, so how do you get the people that don't qualify for the zero down program to put money down and still buy the program? Yes. Ah, I gotcha. Well, again, this is, might sound crazy, but the answer is you build so much goddamn value into your product or service, they have to have it. And then it doesn't matter how they mm -hmm. get it. And then if they don't qualify, that's okay. How do I finance it? And you build value because the reason why they don't have any uh, a desire to put the money down is because they don't value your product or service the way you're presenting it. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Okay, so they, they, they need so what you need to do, believe it or not, is is learn how to present the product so well that they value it so highly it doesn't matter. Does that make sense? What happened? Mm -hmm. what yeah, happened? it does. Yeah, so, so again, that is the answer in reality. It's like, dude, you do that. But okay. when, when you get somebody that they don't qualify, there's another thing you can do, which is called take it away from them. You know, you go in there and you say, listen, the zero down program was for people with flawless credit. Your credit had some challenges, which means you probably aren't going to pay this anyway. So they're going to want to get three or $4,000 down to, to basically advance you the product or service. How does that make you feel? Well, how would, if you were the person, how would that make you feel if I said that to you? Like I'm a piece of Exactly. Because if you don't pay your fucking bills and you got the credit, you should be begging me to finance you. That's the attitude you want to have. And then it's maybe they don't have okay. that. Maybe they don't have the money. You know what I'm saying? Maybe they don't have the money. And that's a bigger problem because they would put the money down, but they don't have it. Okay. They came in on the zero down because they want it, but they don't have it. That's a different story. Then what you need to do is come up with creative financing options. Do you guys have any of those? Um, yeah, $500 down minimum. Okay, you move them to that. And then how long you been, they don't get the 500 How long have you been doing sales? What would you do, motherfucker? What, quickly, I tell me what he did. Like come on, like come on, man. You don't qualify for the zero down, but we can get you going for X amount of dollars, four thousand dollars, let's say. Oh, I don't, I don't, I'm not going to put. Uh, forget it then. Is it the is it the fact yes, that you don't does. have and the four thousand dollars, or you just don't that feel that it's worth it the four thousand dollars? Get clarity, because if it's they don't feel it's worth it, it's a different answer. If they're like, I don't have it, 
Well, don't beat them up and make them feel like shit. You just say, what if I could give you guys some options to finance it? And then they'd be like, well, yeah, if you could do that, great. Now go that route. Make sense? Yep. You're the best. Thanks for calling in. Keep kicking that ass. Thank you. See ya. Bye. All right, all right. My question is, um, when should I or should I not disclose that I was a knucklehead when I was young to have a criminal record? Great question. Great question. I like your adjective, knucklehead. Okay. What he's saying, folks, is should he or should he not divulge that he used to be a crook? Well, I would say you don't really need to divulge it to get along in life, but it, you shouldn't also uh, hide it because that kind of makes you even, you know, a little shady. Why are you hiding it? What are you embarrassed about? So my question would be, do you own what you did yet? Yes. What did you do, by the way? Floated checks. You wrote some bad checks. You know how many people have done that and didn't get caught? Yes or no? Yes, sir. Okay, so guess what? It doesn't make you a criminal. It makes you normal. Okay, the fact that it was against the law when you did it and the fact how you did it and, and, you, and you defrauded people out of their dough knowing full well you didn't have the money, that makes it unethical and against the law. So the question isn't, you know, because I'm sure you went to jail and paid your dues, but brother... Did you learn a lesson and, and, and did you grow and develop and are you still willing to defraud people? Yes or no? Yeah, I learned my lesson. Uh, the last conviction was 22 years ago. Great. I'm just wondering how forthcoming that should be. That's, that's, the, that's the dilemma that I have personally, I guess. Well, it's funny that you just said the last conviction. You didn't say the last violation. Why? Well, because due to conviction yeah. and, a, and, a, and a violation is two different things. When's the last time you floated a check? 22 years ago? Oh, almost 24 years. Good. So you're not a check floater anymore. When's the last time you broke laws without anybody catching you? Um, I have, and I, I, I decided I like to eat, eat, piss, and watch what I wanted to on the TV when I wanted to instead of somebody else telling me what time it was. <laughs> exactly. You mean go to jail? Right, right. I decided if I wanted to eat a pork chop for 2 o'clock in the morning, I'd get up and fix me one, you know? That's right. You know he's from the South because he gets up and fixes. What was wrong with the pork chop that you had to fix it? In, in other words, it's not something you have to be ashamed of, but I wouldn't necessarily volunteer it to everybody, dude. Some people judge you, and that is something to judge. So again, in cases where if you did not tell them and be forthright with them, my answer is yes, you tell them. But dude, don't worry about it. Quit, quit acting like it's such a big problem. It's so old, bro. Go out there and live your life and don't bring that shit up ever again. Don't worry about the negative shit in your past. You can't change it. All you can do now is live in the present and enjoy the present and you've already paid for that debt. Don't keep paying for it, my brother. Don't keep paying for the same debt. All right, folks, listen, that wraps another episode of Ad or Brad Vice, Brad's Advice. 648, it's a long episode. Most people say it's a rerun when they watch it on TV because you guys are watching it live. We're live streaming. So it's not a rerun, fellas. This gets edited down to just pure calls, and that's what you see on YouTube is pure calls, unadulterated, pure, raw Brad Vice. This is the taping, and we always welcome you to be here. And if you want to come live to our studio audience, DM us. Maybe we can work that out. Maybe I can come up with some sort of ticket prize. <laughs> Until next time, keep this shot real. Peace.